obviously we, we didn't find a way uh, to win another game. Uh, another close one, but that doesn't matter because it doesn't reflect in the final result. Um, you go back to it, you know, you look at the first half, uh, three trips to the red zone without points. Uh, you face a top 25 team with one of the best red zone defenses in the country. You've got to find a way to come away with points. You know, two turnovers again. Uh, it, it's hard to, to stay ahead of the game when you, you turn the ball over. And then uh, third down defense, you know, continues to be something we've got to uh, find ways to get off the field when we need to and find ways to make a play when it counts uh, throughout the game, not just at the end, but uh, throughout the entire series of every game. You know, it's, uh, it's frustrating. I think anybody that watches our football team understands that our young men care and they fight and they believe. But we have to find a way to execute better and find a way to, to win the game. It's going to be a quick turnaround because we'll be back here Thursday night. Um, we still have a lot to play for. The plan is to play four more games, but all we can do is learn from this and to focus on improving and find a way to get better for Thursday night against a good Tulsa team. Brian, uh, the fourth down decision where you guys were in was fourth and 16. What went into that and just kind of what was the, the process you guys came over this coach in the set? Yeah, that was my decision. So uh, it was a you know a failed execution. But you look, I believe it was the ball in the 38-yard line? 39. 39, yeah. So the 39-yard line. You know, in a situation like that, obviously, uh, we'll go even go back a couple plays, right? You, first and 10 on the 21. Uh, when we get the targeting, or, you know, that would have been, and I thought we had a lot of momentum going at that time. I really did. Um, the offense was executing and moving the ball at a decent level. And then, you know, obviously that targeting play kind of took the air out of our sails. And then with that fourth down, um, you sit there and look at it. If you do punt it, and we're an average, what I'd call pooch punt team. Um, and if you, you know, if you get a touchback, then you're talking about just a 19-yard flip of the field. Um, had we pinned them down, maybe you know, a 29-30. Um, you know, I've got great faith in our quarterback to make plays and get that done. Um, but that decision was mine, and uh, obviously we didn't get it. And so, uh, you know, hindsight's 2020. But I, I still think at that point. Um, to continue to put our offense out there. Their, their offense was still making plays and doing things at a high level. I just felt at that point we had to find a way on that plus 50. And that was almost the approach going into this game. Anytime we cross the 50, they were going to have to be very, very aggressive. Um, you know, they had the fifth ranked offense going into this game. And uh, our defense did some nice things. But I also thought at that point, um, anytime we were crossing the 50, regardless of the situation, we had to be aggressive. Even if it's fourth and 16, though, was that just making it a little more challenging because it was such a long distance? It wasn't just like a field or anything like that. Was it just a matter of? Sure, I think it's that gray area. You know, I mean, I think once you, you know, if it maybe balls on the 49, yeah, you punt. Um, but once you're, you know, with inside the 40, you know, obviously that would have been too long for a field goal. But it's that gray area of do you go, do you pooch punt? Um, and it was a long distance. Yes, I, I, I get that. But um, it's that fine line of, you know, I, at that point, I wasn't even looking at analytics or anything like that. It was just what I thought was best for our team at that point. And uh, obviously, we didn't get it done. Ryan, uh, first four game win streak since 2013. How do you rebuild the team's confidence? Yeah, I mean, I, I, it, they're hurting in the locker room, absolutely. Um, but they are confident that we can get this thing done the right way. Uh, you go back to our games versus certain, you know, these losses that have occurred for last four. And uh, it's not like the guys are laying down. It's not like they're getting blown out of the water. It's not like they feel like they can't compete. You know, we lost this week to a top 25 team. Uh, we lost last week to a top 25 team. Um, you know, we, we, we had a chance, uh, you know, versus East Carolina went to four overtimes. And the week before, obviously, the, the loss versus Houston. Uh, last minute. So it's not like there's, wow, the plan in place is terrible. Uh, we've just got to find a way to, to clean up some stuff um, so we're on the right side of the scoreboard when it's all said and done with a win. And um, that's, that's the only thing that, you know, these guys do have the confidence, they do have the belief and the fight and the will. 
but we, we've got to find ways to execute better. And, and you sit there and say, well, what is the answer to that? It's a, a thousand different things, right? It may have been play three of the game. It may have been play 19. It may have been this, that. But in all three phases, we've just got to find ways to clean up a handful of things here and a handful of things there. And, and you're talking about a different type of deal. Um, but this ball club, these young men, there's no quit in them. Um, they know they got a lot to play for. Um, you know, I told them in the locker room, we're, we're going to win eight games this year. And, but it's got to be one at a time. We've got to find a way to go out there and beat Tulsa. Right. And, uh, and, you know, we, but finding ways to improve this week. This is the second. Uh, seven win team? No, I don't know. What is it, seven? No, okay. going to ask you. Oh, sorry. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the second straight game um, where Seth has led you guys in rushing. Is that just how the game is playing out, or is that concerning um, that it's not necessarily a running back? It's like a combination. I know we had talked about it a little bit last week. So UCF is a man-free team. And, you know, the way to add that extra hat was we did actually have some more quarterback design runs this game. So if you guys noticed that, there was actually some design runs for him. With it, we also played multiple backs. And, you know, Asa played it quite a bit. Um, Brandon Thomas, you know, had some nice runs. Jay Ducker, um, you know, Sutton. Uh, played a handful of plays. So we've got a variety of backs. And I think they're all playing at a, a solid, uh, uh, good enough level. And so it's keeping them fresh. But then your know, quarterback's also seeing things when they're not there. He's trusting his ability to, to take off the ball and run. Um, so it's a combination of all those things. Hey, Ryan, could you educate us on the, the field goal attempt that was short that Eddie Lewis ran back? Because uh, I know in pro that if you miss it, you get it there. Yeah, so, you know, uh, there was, right, were they going to punt it? Were they going to extra point? So it's something we actually practice every Friday that, um, you know, we usually actually do before end of half, right, a long field goal. We actually work on it with our field goal team that we cover down anytime they have a returner. But we also, as a defense, we go out there in a, what we call a safe look, okay? We, if you notice, we didn't rush a kick because, they're, you know, um, the odds of them, you know, actually attempting that. I mean, the wind was uh, pretty strong down there. And so we always put a return guy down there. It's actually, we have a call for it for a return down the guy there. And then uh, Eddie did a nice job of seeing it was short, caught it. And then um, I'm not going to give away our secrets, but it was smart enough. And the, the defense did a nice job setting up a wall in order to allow him for a return. Um, and, and, you know, and, and it was a smart play and a heads up play by the defense and himself. Yeah, I mean, I think when you're playing a, a team of their caliber um, and you get down there fourth and one, um, you know, Mark, I don't, I, you know, I don't think that would ever change. I think we'd continue to go for it. Um, they did a nice job. We were running the ball pretty well, you know, and even when Brandon was getting tackled, he did it. Uh, they lined up in a, uh, a bare double eagle front and, and, and stopped us. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I think that was the – uh, I'd still, in my heart of hearts, I wouldn't change. Maybe, you know, maybe a better execution, maybe a uh, better call. But again, that's, uh, I think, you know, uh, a fourth and one down there, you, you have the opportunity. You're, you're almost always going to go for those. Ryan, you mentioned cleaning up these concerns with this four game losing streak. How concerned are you that those mistakes can be cleaned up? Not saying that they can't, but how concerned are you that they, that they can't be cleaned up only because? It seems to be happening again and again. Those things keep getting drilled in week after week. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the thing that I think part of that is uh, just finding ways to execute at a higher level. And it's the concern is that it's um, not showing up all the time on game day. And we, we practice it, all that stuff. We, we talk about only the football. We talk about third down defense. Um, those are things we continue to practice at a higher level. But. And then I, you know, challenge. I challenge everybody in the locker room. Uh, how do we get better at those things? You know, whether it is red zone offense, whether it is uh, owning the football, right? Come away with clean catches and doing those things of that matter. Um, whether it is you know getting off the ball on third down. Those are all things we we constantly discuss and, and look at. And um, you know, 
there's certain things we, we had to clean up, like special teams, right? Our, our field goal kicker had been fantastic. And then this game, you know, we had some missed kicks. Obviously, the wind was a factor and all of a sudden, the distance. Um, but then you go back and look at, you know, the coverage units were actually pretty solid. Our kickoff coverage unit looked pretty darn good this week. So it's uh, the ups and downs, right? It's, we haven't been able to be, and I used the word last week, consistent enough um, for four quarters in all three phases. And... Um, the only way I know to, uh, to to fix that is to continue to look at it, continue to grind, to continue to put our guys in the right position um, so we can execute at a high level. So why do you think it hasn't shown up yet? You, mean, you guys are obviously practicing, but why do you think, just from your wisdom and your side, why do you think it hasn't shown up yet? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's a, it's a number of factors. It's not a, a want to or a lack of, uh, of care by our guys. It's just... Um, the lack of execution all in all, but maybe we can put ourselves as, as coaches, put our guys in a little bit better position to have success. Um, and I think you look out throughout a, a, the entire game, and I'll go back and watch it here in a couple hours. I think, Evan, what's happening is it may be, like I said, it may have been the third play here, the eighth play here. And then obviously the ones that stand out are the ones when all right, at the end of the game, the screen, the, the, the fourth and one. Those are the obvious ones. But then I go back and watch them saying, wow, well, if we just – did this, or if we made this read, or if we tackled here, if this guy had played this coverage, um, I think that's what it, it, it is. It's just a bunch of things, and it's not um, a bunch of things that aren't occurring that we need to get to show up. And that's our job as coaches is to make sure that we continue to harp on it during the week and find a way. And, and you know, that's the nature of this game, and that's my job is to get it fixed and get it right, and we will. Ryan, what, would your, what would be your message to a fan base that's discouraged, hasn't gone through? Absolutely, uh, and and they should they should be upset. They have, they have every right to be. Um, like I've told you guys, uh, I appreciate our fan base because they care, and the expectations for this program aren't what they were ten years ago. I understand that. I understand that these the, these guys uh, and our fans are are wonderful fans, are loyal, they care, and they they expect us to compete for championships, and um, to continue to hang with us and believe because. The players do, and, and and we'll keep we'll come out all right on this thing. I promise you guys that. And um, the players, you know, I think anybody, all of our fans that show up tonight, that watch us on TV, uh, that support our young men, continue to, to stay true to us because the young men are staying true to this university. Um, and what's happened? We're in a time in college football, and you guys well know this that when things aren't always going right. Some guys just people throw in the towel and say, "Can't do this." You know, I'm, I'm going to go look somewhere else. I'm going to go do something else. This ain't for me. I'm not going to push forward. You know, we don't have a chance to win the conference anymore. Maybe not. And that's not. And that's the, the great thing about our guys is I can promise you that they're going to come out swinging and keep believing. You know, everyone in their power show up on Thursday and continue to cheer for your guys because they're going to give you everything they have. Brian, um you, you guys, you've mentioned for weeks that you've heard the noise, but you don't have time to focus on the noise. Seth mentioned it this week. Uh, Laird was at practice earlier this week. Have you had any conversations with him during these struggles, and what kind of support has Laird showed you despite the noise being made around the program? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I, I get there's noise, right? And the reason why I get it is because people tell me tonight, ignore the noise, and all I know is to go back to my office and, and find a way and, and continue to find ways to improve as a coach and to continue to find ways to get our uh, our team and our program to improve. Uh, Laird's been great. You know, the support from him, our president, um, those powers that be have been fantastic. They understand where we're at. Um, this is by no stretch of the imagination an excuse. We've got the 10th youngest team in the country, back-to-back uh, -back highest recruiting classes in program history, back-to-back highest rated graduation rate in the country. Uh, grand scheme of things, it, it, none of that matters because we got to show wins right now. But the support by our administration, by Laird and the president have been absolutely fin fantastic. They know we're doing it the right way. They know that any number one of these games could have gone a different way. And I think when we go back to that question about the guys' confidences, they know good and well that sitting here, it could be a different story. And but we just got to find a way, one or two plays here, to get the ball to bounce our right way. Uh, I've been part of this program where the ball bounced our way quite a bit, and uh, we'll get there, I promise you, because I believe in hard work. We'll, we'll get it turned around, and the belief of our young men will get us where we need to be. Coach, you might not be getting the results on the field if you want, but you had Hall of Fame, Isaac Bruce show up. You had Calvin Austin rolling up here on the, on the, on the dollar. What do you think 
what does it mean for your guys to come back here and support you in the fight? Yeah, I mean, that's our alumni base, the former players have been fantastic. You know, Mike's question was just about, you know, Laird's, the support. I mean, I get, last night, two text messages while I was getting in bed at the hotel, Desmond Bain and Isaac Bruce. Hey, coach, can you cool if we come and hang out with you guys? And that's what you want. You got one of the, the best basketball players in the city that, you know, it, he'll be here again Thursday night. Bain will be, and we've got a great relationship because he understands and he supports and gets it. And then you get a guy like Isaac Bruce, a Hall of Famer, one of the best to ever do in Don in Memphis uniform, that wants to be here to support. You got a guy like Anthony Miller who talked talk to the team last night that love and pour, and they know. And, and that's why I appreciate those guys that have been part of this thing that bleed blue and know that we're doing the right way. Uh, and I'm so fortunate to have built those relationships with those guys that, uh, and I'm sure, look, and, they, and guess what? They should be saying, man, coach, we, we got to get more. Let's win some more. I, I understand that. I, I hope they want more for this program, and they certainly deserve it. And we're going to, um, but it is nice to have the support of those uh, that have come before us to continue to do it, the, you know, that we're going to do it the right way and get this thing turned around. Last question. Coach, what explanation were you given on this targeting call? And how much of the momentum you suffered? Yeah, so just talking to the radio about it, you know, as we ran a split zone concept where the, the the fullback tight end, you know, and John Hassel goes back and blocks the defensive end. We kind of zone up on the play. Um, they said that uh, the side judge next to me thought it was actually our running back that did the targeting. I tried to explain to him it was actually our tight end that was on the, the split zone back. And uh, they just said that he lowered his, tar his helmet with intent um, to, to target, and I said, but I said, I, in my again, I'm not, I can't argue with refs, um, but my entire coaching career, I've never seen it come from a tight end or from a core position on a defensive end uh, who may or may not have lowered his head as well. And I, I, I hope the young man's okay and healthy, um, but that was the explanation we were given. Um, I do think that was a a, a huge momentum killer, but that's uh, momentum only allows those that affects it too, um, and so. You know, we were driving and moving the ball. It would have been first and 10 on the 21-yard line. And instead, it uh, didn't go in our favor. And now all of a sudden, you're looking at second 19. Um, and when you're playing a team that's really good in the red zone uh, and really good on defense, uh, they had only allowed 20 points in nine of the last 11 games, um, it, it can cause some issues and some angst and uh, put our, ourselves in a, a bad position. But uh, that's the nature of it. And uh, we're going to live with it. You know, John Hassel is a great young man. There's certainly no intent or will to uh, obviously inflict any injury on anybody. Uh, we'll learn from it and we'll continue to improve. Thanks, Ryan.